lost control. Here is Fowler with a drive. He scores! Kemp into the duck zone. Tries to put a move on Fowler. And then actually Cam Fowler tied it. And then that is the game winner. Pole decisions, third of the night. First career hat trick. Putting the Predators over the top. You know what's what's neat about this is you just listen to the crowd there and welcome back to uh, Morning Line. Uh, Steve Lehman with us. News Channel Five Sports. I mean, what's incredible to me is when I when I saw they lost, you know, their two centers and you know the injuries and all this. I just like, gosh, are they that deep that they can bounce back? That resilience, and they did. And I don't know. It's got to be because they're. A team, but I mean, if, if now I'm not saying any of the players they lost are as good as, say, LeBron James. But if the Cavaliers lose LeBron James, they're done. Okay. Yep. And and yet, you know, we lose two of our captain and our starting center, and it, we don't miss a beat. They're certainly resilient. There's no question about that. They're also remarkably deep. They have now played 18 different fours okay. in the postseason. You, you, you have four lines of three is how every team will start any game. Okay. They've played 18 in mixed match pairs and throughout the course of the And they brought some up from the minor league team too, right. right? Those 18 are the tied for the most of any team in the history of the Stanley Cup playoffs in terms of matching. So that's partly injuries. That's partly the depth of what they can do. But here's the real story of the depth. 16 different guys on their team have scored a goal hmm. in the postseason. 10 different guys have scored game winners in 12 wins in the postseason. It is just a remarkable showing of balance where a different guy each night steps up. Colton Sissons was benched midway through the year. He had a hat trick last night in the clinching game. The game winner on Saturday night in game five was Panas Aberg, who played much of the season in Milwaukee. He was the leading goal scorer for the Admirals, the minor league hockey team. He really wasn't in the lineup in the postseason. He played one game until Kevin Fiala broke his leg right. in game one against the Blues. He's been in the lineup ever since. He gets that goal on Saturday night to bring it back here to allow them to clinch on home ice. It's a different guy every night. It is a system that they all believe in, and you're right. It's not necessarily a superstar. We actually did, I, I think, a pretty cool piece last week before, I think it was game four, where we ran out to fans on the street ahead of the game, and we just said, who's your favorite Predator? We asked probably 10 people. I did not get the same answer twice. Really? Everybody had a different answer. It was P.K. Subban or Roman Yossi or mm -hmm. Ryan Ellis or Mike Fisher or Ryan Johansson or on and on down the list. Everybody had a different hero, a different star on this team, and I think that is why this team is in the position it is, is other than Pecorine, who has basically been there every night of the playoffs with yeah. his brilliant form, someone else has stepped up each and every night. That's why they're in the Stanley Cup Final. Let's take a call. We finally have sure. someone who's probably a Preds fan that's gotten up after someone the Someone who set night, the alarm this morning. <laughs> hey, Anthony, good morning. Hey, how you doing? Good. What's on your mind, Anthony? Oh, man, I'm just rocking and rolling with the Preds. I've been uh, here in uh, Tennessee. I'm in the Robertson County area. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm a hockey player back in the old days. Oh, awesome. Nice. I'm a little older fellow, but yeah. uh, back in the days, that's what I used to do. And uh, I'm from Chicago originally, but uh, mom and dad uh, retired here uh, in Robertson County. And uh, now I'm living in the uh, Cooperstown area, just uh, a little bit outside Springfield, if you know where that is. Mm -hmm. sure. Yeah. And uh, we got a lot of Preds fans, man. We've been rocking it. We've been going uh, every other night. You know, every time there's a Preds game, we have a little meeting. <laughs> we, all, we all get together, and uh, we, we hope and uh, celebrate. And we're hoping that, uh, you know, the Cup, the Lord Stanley Cup, uh, which is something that is really uh, prestigious, you know. Oh, yeah. Uh, that will come to Nashville. And we're hoping and, and we're really uh, positive about that. Listen, I'm with you, and I think it's great what you said you guys do. One of the cool things about this, just bringing people together. I mean, aside from the sport, there's people coming together, unlike him, that don't even really know that much about hockey, but just want to get behind the home team, which I just think is awesome. And then you, and then you start learning about it. Like I said, yep. I've learned more about hockey in the past just two or three weeks as I've paid closer attention than in the 20 years prior. Hockey's a nuanced game. It takes a little yeah, while. It, really it takes is. a while to watch Especially it to figure it out. It. Exactly. It. Yeah. And I'll tell you what, I've been to every arena that the Preds have been in on the road during this run. Yeah. Chicago, St. Louis, Anaheim. Chicago fans very much used to this because right. they've won three cups in seven years. They've been around. They've gone through all these playoff battles. They're great fans. Okay. The Preds kept them out of the building. You know, they they basically quieted them. the building with how they played it, there. Is that the first time that a number eight one seed's been swept by a number eight seed? It is. I think 
it is, is the so first time an eight seed has swept a one seed in either the NHL or the NBA. Okay, that's, that's a how big historic deal. that was. Right, you forget but, that. That's, but the Preds basically shut their fans down with how they played yeah, in that series. Which is great. St. Louis doesn't compare to the atmosphere of what you have in Nashville. Anaheim's like on a different planet I gotta than ask what you, you have I mean, we here watch, in I mean, More people come up to me and say, we're watching the game, and there's all these empty seats in Anaheim. And I don't yeah. know, maybe that's the L.A. I, way, <laughs> and they're just not into it. But what, what's your, I, you were there, right? I what mean, does it look yeah, like in and, there? Just, they're into it. I, but there were empty seats. So I gave them a pass for <laughs> game one because it was a Friday night that started at 6 p.m. local time. And basically that arena is surrounded by I-5 yeah. and the 405 freeway. And if you know anything about those two interstates, it is a nightmare. Yeah, we think yeah. we have traffic problems here. Yeah, I live it there. It is nothing like that. Oh, that's and a pass. So that's a good call. I kind of gave them a pass for the fact that basically it wasn't full until the second period of yeah. game one. And then I looked on Sunday in game two, which was Sunday at 4 p.m. and it still wasn't full at the start and I just thought Predators uh, Bridgestone Arena for Predators games is full 30 minutes before yeah, puck drop right. where are all you guys you know it's not like a revelation the traffic's bad out yeah. here figure it it's out not and like get they've there been on spoiled time. either so I mean I, I don't know it, it, again another indication you see it firsthand we've got the best fans let's go to Barbara Barbara good morning good morning how are you guys hi hey, Barbara. Barbara yeah you hear me yeah we got you what's on your mind well, I was at the game last night. Oh, okay, good. Lucky you. Oh, hey, I'm yeah. in 107. I got great seats. Oh, that's All it. Right. So you've been a season ticket holder for years, or did you just buy them for the game? Five years. Five years, okay. Good for you. So you've been through some tough times, and now you get to enjoy this. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Uh, my question is, after I got home, I had on the NHL channel, and they were interviewing the uh, Ducks coach. Mm-hmm. And he made two statements, which one I don't understand. He said all the goals that the Preds made during the playoffs were what he called dirty goals. And then he also said it wasn't fair that they ended round two on a Wednesday and had to play round three starting with us on a Friday. And he thinks the NHL should do something about that to give him more of a break. Uh, I don't understand the dirty goal comment unless he's saying we played dirty, which... Yeah, that's crazy yeah, compared to his team. I, I, can, I can do that. The other term people often use for that are greasy goals. That's probably the better call, oh, okay. call in the NHL. And what that means is you're doing the hard work. You're being physical in front of the net. You're in front of the goaltender. Oftentimes you get deflections. A guy will shoot it from the perimeter, but you have a guy in mm -hmm, front of the net mm -hmm. who can get a stick on it or get an elbow on it or something mm -hmm. to deflect it by the goaltender. What he was saying was not that the Preds were dirty. He was saying they were doing the dirty work. So not necessarily derogatory. Tr He's just saying that was He was actually scoring. giving them credit yeah. in hockey lingo to what they were uh, doing. Okay, I think it, that's a good question, Barbara, because I would have wondered the same thing. And in terms of the schedule, he's not going to get any sympathy from the Preds because if you remember last year, the Preds played 14 games in 29 nights mm. through the first two rounds. They played every other night except for one in the first two rounds against Anaheim and San Jose because they went the distance. That's kind of how this works. If you play a seven-game series, you're going to have to start – on no more than two days rest, probably just one in the next round. Should the NHL space that out a little bit? Uh, yeah, probably. I, I mean, frankly, for us in the mm -hmm. media, it was pretty brutal when we were trying to figure out where we were going for game one. Yeah. And we were watching that game at 11 o'clock at night and thinking, is it a Anaheim or Edmonton? Are we going right. to Canada? Right. You know, that was difficult for everybody involved. So I, I'd be okay with that, but that's just the way it goes. And oh, that yeah. certainly hurt the Preds last year in the playoffs. It probably did hurt Anaheim here. I think they were tired in the third periods mm -hmm. of these games the Preds won uh, you know an overtime game in game one right off of that breakdown I they stormed back to win in game three when I think they looked way better than the Ducks in the third period they looked better than the Ducks in the third period last night after being yeah. dominated for much of the action early on so yeah I think it plays a factor but the moral of the story there is don't let your series go seven games yeah exactly that's Barbara, yeah, yeah. Do, you, do you have a preference in your mind who you'd rather see the Predators play not that it maybe makes a difference to them but do, what, what is your thought on that oh god it's either Ottawa or Pittsburgh. I would like to see him play Ottawa. Yeah, because you think we had to have a better chance of beating them? I think so. I kind of agree with her. Now, the only yeah. reason I say that, and I don't know, at least from the outside, as a casual hockey fan, um, I, I, I pretty much in my mind think the best player in the world is Sidney Crosby. Yep. And, and, and so right. you've got 
Pittsburgh with the best player in the world, and that's where, at that level, him being that good, you just worry how the Predators would deal with someone. And they've got some other talent there. Although perhaps the best player in these playoffs has been Eric Carlson of the Senators, their yeah. defenseman who's uh, versatile and can do just about anything. He's been terrific in the postseason. So you're going to have stars on either of these teams. But you know what the thing to me about Ottawa, Nick, is Ottawa's going to – be greasy. Yeah. They're going to play that tough physical type of game. They're going to make everything difficult for you. The Penguins are a little bit more of a skilled team. I'm not sure based off of the injuries which one the Preds want to yeah, play, but generally injuries, they can yeah. play them both. But I think for, in general, the Preds would rather skate and show their skill and not be in a fist fight like they were against the Ducks. That would be their preference. Their that best be. series is what they did against the Blackhawks, yeah. which is a very skilled, not super physical team. Which is the kind but of hockey. But the Preds can play both. Which so are, they'll they be ready both, either way. That's the kind of hockey I like to watch. I mean, right. when I first really started getting into hockey was back when Edmonton and Wayne Gretzky. Fast and slick. I, you know, mm. I, frankly, and I know some people watch it. I, the one thing that really turns me off about hockey, and others may disagree with me on this, but what really turns me off are the fights. I have no... I mean, I see where there's a skirmish like last night. I don't count that. But where there's a massive fight during the regular season, I didn't see as much in the playoffs. Maybe you can explain to me why. Yeah. But when the referees step back and the guys drop the gloves and start punching, I'm sorry. And maybe I'm just not. I just think that's awful, and I think it has no part in it. I like seeing the skilled players, the ones that go around the great plays and the speed and the passing. The fights, you can have it. I think it's ridiculous. Now, the hard hits and some of the little skirmishes last night, that didn't bother me. But there have been times where they drop the sure. gloves and the officials stand back and let them duke it out. What the heck is that? The fights in the playoffs almost always stem from the hard hits you're talking about. Okay, in and the that's legit. In the regular season, and this is this is I'm where sorry. I have a real problem. The I regular no season, you oftentimes see guys off the opening face-off because they've lost three games in a row and they're trying to light a fire under their team. You actually have guys that that's basically their sole is role is to be the enforcer. No, they you know call what they are? They're, and they start they're goons. Up. Yeah, they're good. No, that, that's, that's absolutely how it, how it works, and I hate that part of it. In yeah. the playoffs, you get guys you sticking up for people. And you don't see and, it and as you don't much. See it much because you can't handle the penalties, You right? can't handle the penalty. You've got to make sure that if you're going to do it, the other guy's going with you and it cancels out. And so guys are much more calculated and measured with those sort of things. But really, the only time you ever see it is if somebody messes with your goaltender. Right. Because you cannot afford to lose that sure. guy, so you're sure. going to stick up for him. And in this series, Cody McLeod took one in game four, I believe it was. Which was not when smart. It, when Harry Zolnerchuk absolutely got leveled in the neutral zone, yeah. and he went right after And I understand, Jared but Bull. still, then he took a penalty, sure. and that hurt. You know, that wasn't good. They scored after that, I think. I think they did. The one thing I'll say about this, too, I think both Ottawa and Pittsburgh, maybe I'm wrong, have both shuffled a couple goalies back and forth Correct. in their playoffs. We haven't. And so, and you, as you've said, I guess, the most important player on the field. If you have a guy who stops everything, it really doesn't matter what you have in front of you. You're going to win. And, and he's playing better than any other goalie. So that gives us a big edge. I wrote when Johansson went down that the Preds, who were basically the most, and have been, the most consistent team in the yeah, playoffs, sure. I, I wrote from that that they're now an underdog regardless of who they would face. Mm -hmm in the Stanley Cup final because of the injuries and not knowing exactly who's sure. going to be out there. The one thing that changes that is Pecorino because yeah. the goaltender can will you over the top. And you're right. Frederick Anderson, who's largely been great for the Senators, he gave up se – oh, he didn't give up all yeah. seven of them, but he gave up five, I think, the other night before getting pulled in a 7-0 <laughs> win. Marc-Andre Fleury came in for the Pens. He's been largely good, but he had a terrible game yeah. three. Now Matt Murray's in goal for them. So uh, the, the goaltender issues on the other side will be something that will definitely yeah. be highlighted. Goalies, goalies, I just got the image of them going back to Patrick Waugh and Hassett. They're quirky, superstitious type of characters, and, and, that, and confidence is everything, and that's why I yeah. just hope – Pekka, he's older now, sticks with it. But if he slips up, Preds are in big trouble. It hurts. And big, it can go trouble. away just like that. And that's, that's what I worry the thing about. Is if a, a weird, fluky goal goes in, all of a sudden confidence wavers a little bit. But he's different. mature, he's older, and I think he's going to be fine. Listen, and I, just to a quick yeah. point of that last night. A big thing in this series was the injury to Ducks goalie John Gibson. Yeah. After period one of game five, he leaves. Jonathan Bernier comes in. He was decent in game five, although the Preds yeah. got all three goal or well, two of the three empty netter against him. But last night in yeah. that game where the Ducks outshot the Preds 41 to 18, four of those shots against him went in the net. Yeah. And so that was a very high percentage of shots he faced that actually went in. And what you saw is while the Preds gave up a bunch of shots, and Pecorino credited his defense for this, they didn't give up a lot of odd man rushes where right. they hung him out to dry in tough spots. They helped him the out. Preds had two or three two-on-ones or three-on-twos where they got a great look 
And in the playoffs, you have to have your goaltender step up in that occasion. Peck has done it time and time again. Yeah. Bernier stopped none of them. As we did a break, did we know Bernier was going to start? Just we find that out just it, before it the came game. about. It came okay. when they hit the ice. The moment I saw that, I didn't know who Bernier was. I'm thinking, you know, because I thought Gibson was pretty good. I thought that it, I think Preds yeah. going to win this. Gibson's a former because All-Star. I just didn't think that goalie would be up to it, and he wasn't. We'll take a break. We'll be back with hey, stay on your line if you'd like, Phil, Grady, and others. Barbara, Anthony, thanks for your calls. Go Preds. We'll be right back.